Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to show you how I use frequency separation. The idea for this video was put forward by Liam, so thank you very much. Anybody that is not following me on Instagram, make sure you do that now. My Instagram handle is showing somewhere around there. And as promised, go and check out Liam's Behance profile. The a cue card will be popping up there. Go and check Liam out. Thank you very much. Okay, so frequency separation is a technique. I don't even know why I'm using that. Um, frequency separation is a technique in which we separate the color information from the texture information on an image file. The majority of the time it is used in beauty retouching and fashion images. The process itself isn't particularly difficult once you get the hang of it. If for any reason you still feel at a loose end at the end of this video and you don't quite know how to do it yourself, you will find a link to a download of a Photoshop action I created for you guys. So all you have to do is go follow that link download the action and literally once you've downloaded double click it and it will install itself into Photoshop. You will find it as the Fez Photography Frequency Separation in your actions bar. Okay, so let's move into Photoshop. Okay, so I have my image open. The first step we need to do is to duplicate this layer twice. So I'm gonna use Command Control or Command J. We're gonna do that twice. We're going to double click the text, rename this as low, fre low frequency. If my spelling is wrong, I apologize. And then we're going to rename the top one as high frequency. Second thing we're going to do is turn off the high frequency layer. Select the low frequency layer, go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Now this is already set for me from where the previous time I did it to create the action. The radius that you will select depends on the image that you have in front of you. Obviously if there's less of your subject visible, less skin texture visible, it will take a smaller radius to blur that out if they're further away from the camera, for example. If however, your subject is a lot closer to the camera, a lot, a lot like the image we're working on right now, then you would require a slightly higher radius. As you can see on the screen, the higher I go, the more the skin starts to blur. Now I can go to 9 and there's still a little bit of texture showing up, so I'm probably going to go 11. That looks okay. So we're going to click OK. Now we're going to turn the high frequency layer back on, make sure that it's selected, and we're going to go Image and Apply Image. Mine's already set by default, but there are two different ways of doing this, and this will depend on the bit rate of your image, or the bit depth, sorry, of your image. If you can see at the top left of my screen here, I have a 16. That means my bit depth is 16 bits. So to, if you have eight, I will show you an example of how to set this up for an eight bit image after we complete this. So, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select the low frequency layer. We then select invert. We change the blending mode to add and scale will be set to 2 and ensure that offset is set to 0. Once you have all of that done, you can then click OK. Once you've done that, you can change your blending mode from normal to linear light. Now, if we group the low frequency and high frequency together by holding down shift and selecting the low frequency and then pressing control or command G we have our group containing our high frequency and low frequency layers. Now if I turn them on and off you will notice that the image doesn't change. This is because we haven't made any changes to the image we've just separated the color information from that of the texture. So that means if we turn it on, we are seeing the exact same image as we started with. Now, very quickly, all I'm going to do is just rename the group by double clicking on the text. And I will call that frequency separation. So now I'm going to show you how to do it if it's an 8-bit image. 
Okay, so the process for an 8-bit image is exactly the same. So we'll do all of the steps that we did up until turning high frequency back on and selecting it. We go over to image, apply image, and here what we do is ensure that we have low frequency selected. We won't need invert switched on. We're going to go to subtract. And here we change the scale to 2 and the offset to 128. We select OK and we change our blending mode to linear light. Once we've done that, we hold down Shift and we press Command G to group. Rename our group. And we are done. So you'll see if I turn that on and off, we have absolutely no difference between the two. Now, if we go to retouching and how we go about blending the skin. So we select the low frequency layer because that's where our color information is. And what we're actually trying to do is smooth the transition of colors from one to another. So these areas here where we have um, a transition from one color to another are the areas we're going to work with. There are several ways of doing this. You could use the paintbrush tool and use samples of different colors. You can use a mixer brush. Um, and I think there's a couple of other ways that I've seen in various tutorials. I like using a lasso tool because it's really quick and easy. Um, and we can be a little bit rougher with it and select larger areas. So I've selected the lasso tool now what we need to do is we need to select an area where we have a transition so I what I might do is select this area around here so I'm just drawing a circle around it the shape doesn't matter obviously you would want to avoid things like eyelashes and hair you don't particularly want to blend those two colors together now if I hit Q I get a quit mask Yours may look slightly different to mine as I have already set the feather for my image. And the amount of feather will depend again on the image that you are retouching. Turning the quick mask off, I will make a new selection. Turn my quick mask back on. I could probably get away with that 24. But if you want a nice soft transition in your selection, you can see here how it blends. So if I come out of that again, I probably want, I was quite happy with 30, so I'm going to stick with 30. I'll just show you there. See, you can see a really nice soft transition from one to another. So we'll come out of quick mask and then we can start uh, retouching the color of the skin. So to zoom in and out, I apologize, to zoom in and out, I've been using control or command plus and minus or if you want to zoom into 100% you can press command or control and the number one you will zoom into 100% if you want to zoom back out you press command or control zero so now I have this selection here I want to blend these two colors so I'm gonna go filter I'm gonna go back to blur Gaussian blur and I'm just gonna play around with the slider until I'm happy with the effect. I quite like that. Okay, so we're going to also do here. Now, some of you might be wondering if I would re like remove the moles. I used to. I used to completely obliterate and take out any imperfections whatsoever. Now I've kind of realised that less is often more, and I like to keep elements. Um, that are features of the face so for Helen you know these moles are part of her appearance I wouldn't want to offend Helen by removing them suggesting that they were unsightly because they're not um, so I would leave them there if however Helen had a few pimples on her forehead or a big red spot that was going to disappear over the next couple of days then I would retouch that so I think my new ethos tends to be remove the things that are going to remove themselves, leave the things that will always be. So if I just speed through some of these selections. Anyone that is familiar with the channel will recognize Helen 
as the model from the Finding Inspiration series and the behind the scenes that I recently published. If you haven't seen that, I recommend that you go and check that out. If you, Obviously, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, it would be absolutely fantastic if you would. So hit that little red button at the bottom of the video and whilst your mouse is down there, why not hit the thumbs up icon as well because that would really be doing me a massive favor. Okay, so if we turn that on and off, you can now see the effect of the smoothing on the skin. Okay, so again, oh, if we turn that on and off, you can see the effect of the, the smoothness of the transitions in color. So, now we want to take out any blemishes. And I have to say, Helen's skin is actually pretty good. There's maybe some bits of, of foundation that are visible, that I might remove. So let's say, let's have a look. I would, let's take this out um, because it, it looks a little bit like a pimple. I would leave this mole here, this mole, and this one here. So to show you how to retouch skin, um, make sure that you have your high frequency layer selected, and then I would use the stamp tool. So the keyboard shortcut for the stamp tool is S. There you go, there's the tool. What we need to make sure that we have is that we have the sample layer selected to current layer. If we don't, it will pick up the colors and stick them over the top of the, the neutral gray that we're using in the high frequency layer and apply it with the linear light and it would look awful. So we have to make sure that it's selected on the current layer and then we can hold down Alt to sample and just paint away any blemishes. There we go. So let's take that away. So as you can see, Helen's skin is actually pretty good and doesn't really require a lot of work. Okay, let's, if I just, to give you an example, let's remove Helen's um, mole just to show you the effect and then I can I can undo it. So we sample from a skin texture that's pretty close. We can just paint away, and there you go. Oh, wrong one. There you go. So you can see how we can very quickly remove any blemishes. This is frequency separation. So it's actually really quite simple once you understand understand the little processes again if you don't get it i have included a link in the video description and that will be popping up above as well for you to go and download when you are doing this for yourselves obviously take a you know a lot more time and care in the retouching than i have done in this video i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much for joining me and let me know what kind of content you would like to see in the future because i will definitely take it on board and you may see your video idea translated into the youtube channel thanks for watching guys take care